Understanding Growth In the last lecture, we discussed the different phases of child's development and the importance of your feeding relationship with the child to help them transition from one phase to the other. By feeding in a loving and passive fashion, you're giving the child the lead. This will help in supporting their cognitive, social, and emotional development. What and how to feed a child beyond the toddler years will be covered in the next few modules, but before that, I would like to give you some insights into growth charts and what they mean. This is a typical growth chart. You may have seen this at a doctor's office when you go in for regular checkups for your child. This one is a weight for age growth chart of a girl between 0 to 24 months. And this one here is for a boy. Here we have height for weight for a girl between 2 to 19 years. And the next one is height for weight for a boy between 2 to 19 years. There are many other charts including height for age, weight for height, head circumference, and much, much more. We also have different growth charts for different developmental conditions. The lines here represent how most children of this age group grow. The line in the middle, the line here, this 50%, represent 50th percentile. That means that 50% of children of this age range weigh this much. Although these charts represent the growth of other children in the age group, the point of it is not to compare your child to other children. The point is actually to see the trends in your own child's growth. So this is what a typical growth chart looks like. And I want you to notice that I said typical, not normal. Many people call this a normal growth pattern. However, I do not endorse this word because it then feels like anyone who is not growing in this manner is not normal, which is very far from the truth. Like I mentioned earlier, Growing in the 50th percentile means that your child is growing like about 50% of children in his or her age range. Sometimes, and especially for children who were born prematurely, it takes them time to catch up to their growth rate. It's not uncommon for an infant to have periods of catch-up growth during the early months if he or she was small to begin with or even have a slowdown in growth if he or she was big to begin with. And this is normal. It is as normal for a child to be growing at a different percentile as long as their growth is consistently on that pattern. Whether it's the 5th percentile or the 97th percentile, the key is consistency. Children's height and weight tend to adjust towards the average of both parents' height and weight. So if you feel, or even if your doctor mentions this, you should remember that they have your genes and will be close to your range. If you and your partner are taller, then your child will probably be on the upper end of the percentile. And the opposite is also true for a child of a parent with a smaller frame. Again, the key is consistency in growth. You can trust the child to grow normally even if they are at extreme percentiles and growing persistently along that growth line. Growth charts give us many clues and are one of the best overall indicators of how your child is developing medically and nutritionally. Even emotionally, children respond as much to what is fed and how they're fed as much as the emotional state of everything around them. Sometimes when a child is not growing well and nothing else is wrong, if the child is not emotionally secure, they will not grow. Some babies who are classified as failure to thrive may have no other medical or nutritional shortcomings other than their emotional state. They just choose not to grow. Also, you wouldn't think so, but the growth curve also gives us clues to how your feeding relationship is going with your child, regardless of their age, whether they're infants, preschoolers, preteens, or even teens. For growth to be optimum, children need a safe and secure environment. To improve your child's eating, their nutritional, physical, biological, and psychological needs should all be met. As long as there are no medical barriers to feeding, the child relies on the parent and their feeding relationship to grow and develop into each phase. One of the most important things for a child is their ability 
to trust and depend on you, their caregiver. Once they have that going, then they can feel free to grow and develop as nature has intended. Now, slowly crossing percentiles can also be normal, whether the shift is up or down. As long as the growth is smooth and steady within the new percentile, then that's fine. It may be that there was a temporary issue, for example, the child was sick for a while. Sometimes it can be a cause for concern, but the majority of the times it's not, at least until that point. The concern can actually be created at this time. When a doctor or health worker sees any shifts in percentile, they try to do a more thorough job in their evaluation just to confirm and rule out any medical problems. In many cases, the doctors find no medical problems and they try to reassure you if you are lucky enough to get a good doctor. Some doctors try to caution you and try to tell you to feed them more or less and it also depends on how concerned you are. Either way, even if it's not a big deal, you as a parent sometimes look at their thoroughness and compound it with your own fears and uneasiness in seeing any extremes in your child and maybe begin to feel that something is not normal and you start to feel uneasy or even panic a little. Sometimes it's not even the doctors. It may be your relatives or friends or even partner who point out something that may seem to them that is unusual and you start to feel worried. Parents are under a lot of pressure and feel it is their job to help their child. Unfortunately, this is usually the start of the real problem. Even if your child was growing well and consistently on the growth curves, you trying to take matters in your own hand will determine how the curves will shift, and they will one way or the other. The best and hardest thing you can do is to not panic and to not do anything and wait to let nature resolve this on its own. Now I'm going to stop this lecture in this module here, but I want you to think about it for a while and answer this one question. Why do you think the matter gets worse when you try to help? Is it because overfeeding will make your child obese? Or underfeeding will make your child slim? Or that by doing this you disrupt your child's internal regulation? Or is it all of the above? I'm going to let you think about it and answer this on your own. And I'll get back to you with the answers in the next module. Thank you.